And uh, this week for the podcast, I have the uh, founder and CEO of a pretty interesting Shopify store called uh, Hess at Hess.com. And their CEO is Aaron Ambusk. Did I pronounce that properly, Aaron? Uh, Ambusky. Ambusky. Sorry about that. Um, and, and Aaron, why don't you tell us a little bit about your store, how you got started, how long you've been around, and where your current business you know, momentum is at. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, Scott. Great to meet you and great to have this opportunity. Uh, yeah, Hest was born out of a pain point of mine and that the type of camping I was doing, I was driving to my campsite and sleeping terribly. And I've spent my career in product design and development uh, in action sports and outdoor uh, designing skis and snowboards and lots of different outdoor products. And just naturally started prototyping and researching what could offer a better night's sleep in the outdoors and uh, landed on our sleep system that we launched back in 2019 on a Shopify store. Uh, it really offers the benefits and experience of an out your home mattress uh, and is portable enough to take to an outdoor setting and design for that. So we yeah, talked to a few people at the time of launching the product. It was a bit of an MVP product idea and that we built uh, 75 of them just to see what customers would do and how they'd react and got some great reviews and kind of been off to the races since then and trying to keep up with customer orders. Well, that's a good problem to be having with a store that's only three years old. If you're trying to keep up with demand, um, it, it, it sounds like it sounds like you, you took your industry built expertise in, in product and said, well, I'm going to build my own business using my expertise, which and solve my own pain point, my own problem, which is, you know, that's the entrepreneur's dream. If you can just break out of that corporate, you know, stranglehold and, and build your own business. Um, it, does it feel that way for you or am I, or am I making it too romantic sounding? <laughs> oh, uh, it's that romantic and it's that challenging all at, at once. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think, Again, having spent my career in product design and development, uh, the the romantic and the opportunity of having your own site and interacting directly with your customer is really learning as quickly and uh, as intimately with our customers as possible uh, that really, to me, most excitingly informs new product design and development. And uh, having spent time with, you know, kind of larger companies for many years, uh, you would design a product and it would be a year later that it's on the shop floor and uh, you're getting kind of marginal feedback from a shop employee on how the customer liked your product versus it's been wonderful with uh, Hess.com on Shopify and being able to get that immediate feedback that is informing our, our future design and development. Yeah, and total aside, I like your branding here. Your logo is so simple and elegant. It's just it, it screams professional to me. Um, you know, the mattress with the, the outdoor back, you know, foreground on it kind of thing. How did you get a four letter domain in 2019? <laughs> uh, came up with a word that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, that's a good, good start. Um, Hestia is what we're named after, which is the Greek goddess of home and hearth. Uh, and that's just awesome. looking for kind of a shortened version of that and landed on Hest, did a couple Google searches, uh, saw that it wasn't being used and uh, felt like that was something we could really put some moment energy into. That, that's awesome. I love the fact that it actually has a Greek goddess meaning that that's kind of, I love those backstories, right? Um, th those are the kind of backstories that, that people repeat, right? If, if Hest didn't stand for anything, no one would ever repeat it, but if people hear that backstory, they're like, oh, it's the Greek goddess of home and, and health or, or whatever you said, or I forgot the term. Um, and people people love stories. And if you give them something to repeat about your brand, then they will repeat that, right? Do you actually yeah. talk about that in your R story, that it's the, uh, the goddess of... Oh, I don't know if it comes out <laughs> uh, yeah. in there. It kind of pops up in different brand conversations. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would just, you know, I would recommend adding it to your story somewhere. Like like I said, if you give people something to repeat, I, I find they end up repeating it. And, you know, I want to shift gears rather quickly here into, you know, you know looking at your website and just giving you feedback. Um, because 
the first thing I noticed when I looked at your website the other day for the first time, I'd never seen it before, was how much amazing content you have created for your store, especially now that I know you're only three years old or going into your third year. You know, you have so many product shoots, like your homepage image here, right? This is actually your product. It's not Photoshopped in. I'm going to guess this is actually your truck. Um, and you're, you know, you're outdoors in an environment and you do that over and over again with photography and with video. Here, here's a video and you put together several videos and I see lots of photography in your blog and stuff like that. I was amazed at how much content you created for your, your, your brand already. And is that something that you had thought you were going to do in the beginning or, or how did you find that core competency to do that? Do you do in-house or do you outsource that? Uh, yeah, I think it's having spent my career in the outdoor industry and action sports. I mean, it's just kind of naturally what myself and the, the team I brought on do. Uh, and I think very simply and thankfully the product we use just lends itself to being in settings that are very <laughs> aspirational and, uh, exciting for people to shoot and get excited as photographers and videographers uh, that they want to shoot our product. So, and yeah, it's, it's a mix. I mean, we have lots of friends who are amazing creators in these spaces that, uh, have helped us along the way and building up the brand. Um, and it's just wonderful to work with those friends. And then, yeah, we get messages pretty much daily these days with people that are out there doing this lifestyle, living van life or living, uh, and enjoying these things in the outdoors and have great cameras and excited to kind of share their their content with us. So uh, it's, it's wonderful when you're selling an aspirational product that uh, is at home in the outdoors because people love to, to shoot that sort of stuff. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense where, you know, you have no problem with influencers wanting to participate or, you know, just the, the social media mavens wanting to participate in your content creation which, you know, once again, great problem to have, you know, if you were a diaper yeah. company, it wouldn't be as easy for you kind of thing. Um, exactly. So one of the things I noticed on your website and, you know, we, we should always optimize our websites for the mobile phone. Um, and I look at it on desktop and that's what I'm sharing it with you on right now, just because it's easier to see and talk about things. And on desktop, you know, this, this homepage image is a great example where the image is larger than my screen, right? And there's multiple places, it's just feedback for you, there's multiple places, like like this. these images here, we're going full width on this screen. And in the turbo theme that you're using, you can choose not to have it be so large. But right now, if I wanna look at all four products, it takes more than the screen to do that. Um, and what's one, one of the nice things here in the turbo theme, if I go to the mobile view, um, which I'll do here for you in a second, um, you're still using the same exact image where you could crop this differently on the mobile phone and have it, you know, be a, a portrait image instead of a landscape. Um, so you could you could optimize your imagery for mobile and desktop and have separate images or separate croppings of the images. And I, I wouldn't be so aggressive in being full screen width on desktop because it ends up that, you know, what I'm looking at takes more than the screen and I got to scroll and I, like it was a video I was watching somewhere on your site that was full screen and I couldn't see the whole video at one time. Like I'm scrolling up and down, like trying to get it to fit and just, just a little bit of annoying. You know, you know that's not mm -hmm. the, you know, the biggest problem in the world. It's, it's, just, it's just a fine tuning point for you there. Yep. That's a great suggestion. And when I build a store, you know, I, I think of a store as a product uh, or a Decision-making engine, sorry, I got, I got caught up there. Most stores, what they do is they list their products, right? And what they don't do a good job of is help customers make decisions in their product catalog. And, you know, the store that's the worst of that in the world is Amazon, right? Amazon's an absolutely horrific shopping experience. Nobody goes to Amazon because they help us make decisions. But what Amazon does, it gives you lots and lots of information. They have great shipping. They have every product in the world, which is why people shop there. And, and the point I'm leading up to there is, is this is on your homepage. This is a great example where you show me your four products, but you're not helping me decide which one's best for me. Right. And I'm also not a fan of this hover effect stuff on, on desktop. I, in this theme, you, you can actually have this text be underneath it. 
I prefer that because then I can see this one liner on each one of these without having to hover over each one separately and that kind of stuff. But what's missing here, and especially on your shop page, for example, is just a little explanation to people. So you basically have, right, three mattresses and a pillow. The, the other branded accessories, I'm not even gonna talk about. Um, th those are nice brand building exercises, but your main product line is your three mattresses and your pillow. And I'm gonna assume that the most important decision for someone to make when they're shopping is which of the three mattresses is the best for them, right? So on this page here, right, I might have a shop mattresses, right? Instead of, instead of having them at the top level in the nav, pick a sleep system, a foamy and a dually, which are your three different mattresses, I might have a shop mattresses, right? And I would actually make that a top level nav link, right? Mattresses, um, instead of having to hover over and then, and then click on it. But on that mattresses page, you know, I, I call this, you know, a, uh, a decision making page or a buyer's guide. I would have, you know, I would have your, your page say, all right, we got three choices for you here. We got the foamy, we got the dually, and we got the, the sleep system. And here's the pros and cons of each, right? If you're two people in the back of a truck, you want the dually because it's double wide, right? If you want more comfort, and if, if I get, you know, the, the, your product's wrong, you can let me know. But the, you want, if you want more comfort, it's the Hess sleep, sleep system. If you want, you know, something simple and portable, it's the foamy. But explaining at this level here what your three options are for mattresses and then letting the customers make the choice of which one they want instead of having to go into each of the product pages and try to figure out what the differences are, right? On this page here, and this is where a lot of stores get it wrong, you don't want to highlight the awesomeness and all the awesome features of these three mattresses. You want to highlight the differences of the three mattresses, right? So if they're all made with memory foam, for example, you don't talk about that, right? Because that's not a difference. Because if you talked about all the pros of each of these, there'd be a lot of redundant information between them. So what you're trying to do is call out <clears throat> differences between them so that people can make a decision like, oh, the dually is the only one that's, you know, for a couple. So I'm, I, you know, I don't have to choose between the Hesleep system or the foamy because I need, you know, the back of my truck filled with a mattress kind of thing. So making that a decision making engine for customers. And then, you know, once you start doing it that way, you're more confident when somebody gets on to a product page that this is the right product for them um, because they've already been educated about the products at the level above. So now you're just selling them on this product, which you're doing a really good job of here, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, you're, uh, we are in the middle of a update, uh, especially as we move to 2.0 and uh, you're preempting what we were, we're already doing. So uh, <laughs> including, awesome the, uh, including the navigation you mentioned and kind of a landing page that talks to differentiation. Yep, yep. And then I'm going to assume, or let me ask you this a question. Do most people buy a pillow at the same time they're buying a mattress? Uh, it just depends. I mean, there are people that are just coming for a pillow, and then there are people that uh, use it as an add-on. Yep, yep. You know, because at the top level nav, you get a mattresses, pillow, and they can make that choice there. But then, you know, when you're, you know, on a, a page here for, you know, the, the mattress, you could have product options for pillow, you know, no one or two for the dually, right? So that you can be upselling, you know, basically you're bundling in this case here, but you can do that right inside of Shopify's product options. There becomes an issue there with inventory management, depending if you're using SKUs and managing inventory and if that's done in Shopify or not. Um, but one thing to think about is, do you upsell the pillow right here on this page, right? Or the other one to do is, if they add it to the cart, if they add this to the cart, you could ask them right then, do they want to add a pillow to their order? Right. And, and let me show you what that looks like. Let me go to Bixby Chocolate. Oh, I got to spell it properly. And on this one here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a gift chocolate and I'm going to pick their puffin just because it's a cute little chocolate item. And so I've already said this is a gift, right? I'm, I've selected the gift category. And when I get to this page and I see the chocolate puffin and I add it to the cart, there's a modal that pops up that says, hey, do you want to add a gift card to your puffin gift? 
If they say yes, please, we're going to go to a collection of gift cards. And if they say no, we're going to take them to the cart. So they say yes, please. And then this is where your pillow could be, right? I and mean, you could take them straight to the product page to the pillow. So if someone adds a mattress to the cart, you know, if you don't bundle the mattress on the product page, which you could do with a product you know, with a bundle app or with product variants, depending on how you're managing inventory. And then right here, when they add it to the cart, I would have a natural, I call this a linear shopping experience where most people try to do things in parallel, but sometimes you should do them a step at a time and make them linear. I would have a little upsell that says, hey, do you want to add a pillow to your mattress or two pillows if you're getting the dually kind of thing? And then let them go to that pillow page to understand more about the pillow and all the value props behind it. And is that an add-on or is that in the theme? Um, that is an add-on and I've done it in custom code and, and I'm not here to sell you on my apps, but what I just showed you with Bixby, that's, that's a free app that I have in the app store that's doing that functionality. Mm -hmm. Um, so as we're just going through this, I, I want to go to your, your, which, which one of your mattresses is the best selling? Uh, sleep system. Sleep system. Okay. And when I looked at this one earlier today, you know, so I'm not a fan of showing a product option where there's no choices to be made. Right. So here, you know, and I'm also, I'm not a fan of the way turbo does turbo and flex both do this where, you know, there's no hover effect here except for the cursor. And here we're not showing the add to cart your button. There's some things that I'm not a fan of. I used to do custom code behind it to fix that, which is easy stuff that you can do here your developer. Um, but I wouldn't show a product option here when there's no other choices. Cause right now when I see this and this could be one of those, I'm too close to it. I know Shopify too well, but I'm like, what options are missing? Right. If there's an option here. Yeah. We're, we're adding up. another size here. Oh, uh, perfect. Perfect. That makes sense then. Yep. Um, and I love the fact that you've got this little infographic here. I, I think your, your product page has lots of good content. I'm not a fan of share buttons that said, if they get used in your business or on your store, that's great. But in my experience, no one ever clicks on these things in most stores. And here's an example of your video being too large, right? Um, especially because our, our nav bar doesn't go away. Um, it, it's too large. And then these become really large also. And I would just, you know, have the width of that page be confined to this, 1200 pixel width that's going on in, in the, the top part of your product page. And that means, you know, whatever size monitor you put it on, you know, it's always going to stay within the 1200. Cause I, I literally right now in front of me, have a 27 inch monitor and two fifties on my sides. And if I move this over to the 50, it would just be ridiculous what that would look like um, because it would be full width on that 50 inch monitor. Um, and yeah, you know, well, it might be helpful and interesting for you now to look at the foamy that em, em, embodies our new format. Oh, nice. I, I love this right here. I didn't see this before. I love these. Um, I call them product seals. Um, you don't even need to have the pluses in there, to be honest with you, because uh, this makes me think like it's an equation. And I'm asking myself, what does that equal? Um, but I love the fact that you have this hundred day guarantee up in the, the, the top bar, but you're also supporting that down here. Right. Um, and you could even go to the next level on that and have a modal that pops up if they click on it, that gives them a little more information about it. Like no questions asked, easy returns and return policies are super important as I'm sure, you know, which is why you're doing that. So really doubling down on that information. And what I like to do on a product page is answer any question the customer is going to have about that product on that product page. And what I mean by that is I wouldn't say, Hey, we have a hundred, hundred night money back guarantee. And if they click on it, I would not take them to the hundred day guarantee page. I would leave them on the page they're on and answer that question there for them. Right. Um, you know, same thing with every your shipping policy. So well, a lot of things that I do on my client stores is I use um, accordions a lot to add lots of content in. And I will actually put in an accordion, the return policy and the shipping policy. 
So if they click on it, it will expand and they can see it um, without having to go to another page for that kind of stuff. But I, I like this layout a lot. Um, I can see where you guys are, are evolving it. And here we go. You've got the, you're going that standard width on this product page and not going that full width. And I love the, the stacking of these photos like this, just the lifestyle and, and setting the tone for things and how graphical you are. Infographics are absolutely fabulous and you're doing those. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> you know, to, to totally nitpick, I just wouldn't put a box, a, a line box around this, right? Um, you put a little more white space in here, the same white space you have, you got rid of this line box, the content would show more and you wouldn't be, I'm distracted right now by looking at those lines, but that's a, that's a total nit. Um, and here you're doing the Hess pillow, you know, in the same page where, you know, you might want to think about doing that as a product option here or, you know, the linear shopping experience type thing. Also, either, either one of those is fine. Um, and as I read through your Yahoo reviews, you know, I love the comments that you had. And I noticed on your homepage, you used industry comments, which are fabulous. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You might also want to think about, oh, here you go. There, there's one of your industry ones. You can also do the same thing with your client um, re reviews also. And some people mm -hmm. even put that even higher up. You know, the, the review, they'll put it up here right above the product form too. But you're, you're doing... This page is much better than the other one we're just looking at. I, I, I love what I'm seeing here. Yeah. And I, I think, as, as I mentioned, but this is this is a new product we just launched in December. So we launched it on a new format that we've been developing. And we're in the process of converting both navigation and format over to this. Yep. Yep. And one of the things about this that, that to me, makes it look so professional, right? And people come to a store and they may not be able to verbalize it but they definitely notice it when things are more professional like having authentic photography versus stock photography they notice those kind of things and also what's really nice here is all of your graphics that you're making whether they're the icons or the infographics map to your color scheme so there's a consistency behind those you know i'm sure you've been to the websites where they've got you know three different product deals up here and they just look like they were grabbed from three different random websites that are completely unrelated and they don't go well together. Your stuff is all going well together. It's consistent. It maps to your theme. It just makes it way more elegant. Cool. Now, something else I noticed, because, you know, when I first heard about your website, someone said to me, hey, search for a Hest Camp mattress. Because <laughs> they didn't know the, the domain of your website. when They, they should have known it being only four letters. But I want to show you what happened when I did that. So here's an ad. So you're paying for this link right here. Um, and by the way, very interestingly, you're not showing up in SEO yet for, for that term, which is very surprising to me. Um, but that, that's a separate problem. So in, you know, to overcome that problem, you're, you're doing a paid ad, which makes total sense. So it's going to take me to your, your landing page here. And I just wanted to point out that on this page, you're actually not selling enough. And, and these here, right, these are shopping links. I know that, but they don't say shop now. They don't say buy now when I hover over them. And I told you before, I don't like this hover effect, but that's just a personal thing. But here, right, I would be much more overt. You know, and you're doing a great job in setting the tone. That's absolutely the right thing to do, right? You're taking somebody who's just searching for, for Hess camp mattresses, which probably is someone in a purchase or a shopping you know, experience, and you're explaining the value props to them but there's not enough shopping promotion here, like buy now, right? So you, you could have, you know, these links here say shop now, and at the bottom of the page also is another, you know, shop now, or, or, you know, go to our buyer's guide, get more information. There's just not enough call to action considering how much content is invested on this page. Yeah, this is a brand new landing page that we just launched, um, and that's definitely, Fair feedback that would be good to incorporate. Well, and on this one here, you, you know, you, you guys have already seen the same thing I'm talking about where you're, you're going to not be full width in your banners, right? Because um, I'm, I'm sure you guys have figured out, you know, what I do for a lot of my stores is I make the banners full width, but I only make them five, six, 800 pixels tall. 
Um, the challenge with that is most photographers do not shoot a photo that can be cropped to that aspect ratio. So it ends up looking like crap. Um, and that's why you guys are keeping your aspect ratios a little more rectangular than really, really landscape. Um, so, you know, going to that not full width is a good decision probably on your team's part there. Um, and then, you know, similar to not shopping enough, right? I looked at this page here. So this is a blog article of yours. So are you getting a lot of your traffic through SEO today? And, and are your blogs driving that traffic for you? Uh, yes. Okay. So, you know, and then the reason I bring that up, like if, if you've got a bunch of blog articles and they're not driving traffic, it's, it's not worth your time and energy to worry about it. But if they're driving traffic to you, right, this here should also turn into a shopping page. Um, and blogs in my world, right, the way I think about it, the blog only exists for one reason. And that is to draw customers to your store, right? I don't believe in blogs as a way to engage customers on your store. It's only to bring traffic to your store. Um, and, and I bring that up because if that was true, then, you know, I, I argue with my clients all the time on this one. I don't believe in putting blogs on your homepage or promoting them, right? If they're only for traffic acquisition, then don't try to reuse them, right? Um, but that said, you may you want to use them for engagement also. There's nothing wrong with that if that's you know the, the business decision you're making. But here we are on this this article that talks about memory foam camping mattresses. So basically, you know, you're you're going through the pros and cons, which is all great content. But once again, and there are links on this page. I saw them somewhere that takes me to the mattress. I think there was links there, but there's no button, right? There's no shop now, there's no buy now button, right? And if I've got to like scroll through and try to find where the link is that takes me to it, and this one here takes me to another blog article, right? So on this page, you know, which is, you know, there might be some content in your blog. Like I saw ones like how to trick out your, you know, your truck for camping overnight. Maybe you don't have a buy now link on that page, but on this page where you're talking about your mattresses, you definitely have buy now links. And you can just do that in HTML, right? You can have a little HTML, you know, take your your um, add to cart button or your buy buttons or any, any of the links you have from your turbo theme, just have a little HTML for it so it's graphical, right? A lot of people are skimmers and a lot of people are on the phone and you want a really bright, very obvious, this is our buy now button functionality to take you there, which, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not happening on this page right now. Cool. So, where is your most of your traffic coming from today? Is it through advertising? Is it through social? Is it through organic? Is it through email? And then, you know, where are you taking them to in the in the landing for that? Uh, it's definitely a blend across all those you just mentioned. Um, and I think, as you discovered, trying to get people to that landing page is kind of a first touch point. Uh, has been what we've been evolving to, uh, as well as the homepage, just naturally being uh, a landing page. Yeah, I actually, I'm a big believer in that you should never, ever, ever send a customer to your homepage, which is really hard to do in execution because it takes a lot of work, right? Um, but, but like the fact that you have the landing page that you do, that's a great first step. And then what ends up happening over time is you'll end up, I'm trying to remember, oh, there we go. You'll end up over time having multiple landing pages, right? So this store here sells one product. And what we did is we made it a landing page. So the product is, is a, a pain relief product. And we made landing pages for each body type, right? So this is the one for rotator cuff. So if you need to, you know, if you have a rotator cuff injury, you want healed, the ad will send you to this page. And you'll notice all the photos are of shoulders, right? And all the value props talk about rotator cuff injuries. We have another page for ankles, another for calf and those kind of things. So, you know, I could totally see you in the future having landing pages for camping, or for van life, or for, you know, whatever use, other use cases you have, or, you know, desert versus alpine and, and those types of scenarios. 
but having you know having that you know the content you've created then you, for your landing pages all you do is you just say all right here's my target audience here's what i know about them like you may have different ads for men and women you may have different ads for camping versus adventure and, and those kind of things you'll end up building out landing pages that take what you know about that customer take the content you got or all around the table and say all right this customer has this type of stuff and and put up those value props for them. And on your new theme redesign, are you going to stay in when you go to online store 2.0? Are you staying in the turbo theme? Yes. Yeah. So turbo allows you, and along online store 2.0 especially allows you to add content in and out much more easily than you, you can even in turbo today, right? You have a page dot details template in your turbo today, which gives you lots of rich control. It's going to be even more so when you get to online store 2.0. So you get to reuse that content that you create a lot more easily than you do today, which will be a lot of fun for you when you when you deploy that. Yeah. And on your on your social traffic, um, are you doing that from your own social networks or influencers driving traffic to your store? Uh, we are exploring the potential on the, the influencer angle. Um, yeah, and, and I would say we're we're open to <laughs> advice uh, or thoughts of what would be a best way to drive that because um, we're we're kind of testing lots of different methods. Yeah, and you know, I have found that that most people, the people that are the most successful in social, are the ones that create great content, and usually they're creating their own great content, and people are interested in that content, right? Um, I have one example of a podcast I did about a year ago with a, a client called Grip Clean, and all they do is sell hand soap, and it, it's high quality hand soap for like auto mechanics, so it's not sexy at all. And the amazing thing is they they do really good TikTok videos about how to clean your hands, right? And they're funny, and they they do them all in house, and they they sold out their inventory last year because of their TikTok traffic, which. You know, you wouldn't expect TikTok audience being people that cared about, you know, cleaning their hands of oil and grease. But if you create great content, then people will come. So and I've also found, you know, the influencer world, you know, there can be success stories. Absolutely. But it's really hard. Right. And there's, you know, there's a bunch of influencers out there who are super talented and really good at what they're doing. Um, but those seem to be more in the beauty and fashion area where they're adding value because they're creating content of how to apply the makeup or how do you, you know, use these nails kind of thing. So they're creating content that you're not creating yourself. So it, I guess the Uber point of what I'm saying now that I think it through is it's all about the content, whether you create it or they create it, it's the content that's going to drive that most importantly. Right. Sure. And on your videos, are you creating those in house? you talked about, you know, friends helping out also, are you doing videos today? Uh, it's a mix, but certainly the, yeah, a lot of the video that we use is created by a person that does that for their job. I mean, that's their profession and we don't have, and yeah, so we're doing it uh, out of house a lot of the time for the, the final edits and so on. But do you guys set up the camera and, and do the raw shoot yourself and get the lighting all It's a up? mix. You know, I mean, we're shooting reels in the warehouse right now, uh, and that's just the warehouse workers shooting it and doing that. Uh, it is also we have uh, guys that do amazingly professional videography that do they shoot the motion and they do the editing and the full package. Yep. So it's yep. really a blend. Yeah, Because I, I find that video is super, super valuable. Most companies today still aren't shooting video enough. Um, and, you know, one of the things I have always said is you can't have too many videos. Um, I, I've built product pages with six, seven, eight videos on them, and it's it's not too much at all, right? Now, you know, I'm not saying you need seven or eight videos, but you could have, you know, video testimonials. You could have professionals talking about your products, how to set it up, durability, talk about our shipping policies, how we, you know, have a 100-day guarantee. All that kind of stuff can be videos. Um, and then one of the nice things with video is as you create videos, you could also convert the, the voice to text. And there's software that does that automatically these days. And then you drop that transcript on your page or on a, on a, you know, a blog article or something. You make a, you make a video 
page or a blog page for every video you have, add that transcript to it, and then all that content that you created now is an SEO benefit behind it also. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just another way to, to leverage the content that you have. But video is super important and not enough people are shooting it and you are. So uh, you're a step ahead of them. I would just, you know, double down on that for your traffic acquisition, right? And how much video can you create to, to bring people in? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, one very simplistic way of thinking of how I approach our website is it really needs to replace a shop employee in, its tr in the traditional sense of you go into an REI uh, or you go into a Nordstrom's and you talk to somebody and they make recommendations and they engage with you. Uh, that's really our goal with our website is to offer that. And I think video as a medium is a very approachable uh, an intimate way for somebody to build confidence uh, in the product and better awareness of what they're they're looking at. Yep, yep. And and I, I totally agree with you replacing the shop employee, right? The, the, and that's you know when I was talking before about a lot of stores just show their products and just list in, in their product catalog. They don't ask the question like, why are we here today? Oh, you're here for you know you know uh, mattress. Well, are you looking for one for your truck or your tent or your kayaking, you know, all that kind of stuff. They don't go through that consultative approach to shopping, right? And that's what mm -hmm. I mean about making your, your collection pages in a, a decision-making engine kind of thing. Um, For sure. One of the things that, you know, you're doing here, you know, I talk about quality, like I, I loved your logo and how you have consistency in your um, elements and colors and all that good thing. And you do tell your story because the reason I'm bringing this up right now, you, you reminded me of this is, I think that people buy from small Shopify stores because they don't want to buy from Amazon or Walmart, right? And they want to buy from a human being. They don't want to buy from a brand, although, you know, has is a brand that will become even more of a brand, but they want that human story, right? And, you know, if I look at your, I'm going to call this a branding video here. When I look at it, what's missing a little bit, you've got some of it, right? It's just missing a little bit of it is that more personal thing where somebody gets on there and looks right at you and says, Hey, I'm Bob. Or, hey, I'm Aaron. And you know, I started S because yada, yada, yada. And building that little bit of rapport and you guys, you know, it, it appears to me, you have serious outdoor street cred, right? You're up in the Seattle area. The Pacific Northwest is, is an outdoor, you know, Mecca. I see you've got, you know, I, I saw one photo of your, of your garage. I assumed it was with mountain bikes and skis and skateboards and all that stuff lined up in it, I would double down on that a little bit, right? And make it a little more obvious. You, you do plenty of it. I'm not saying you don't at all, right? You're showing your employees and your staff a lot, which is great. I, I would be even a little more conscious of that and, and let people know that, you know, we, 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 you know, our dream started here, right? On a mission for a better night's sleep and, and just double down on the fact that, A, you're an American company, which I think is super important because your audience is probably mostly American, right? This, you know, where are your products made? Uh, we do final assembly in Seattle. I, I would say that, right? I would make that a product seal on your product page, right? Um, and I bet you, you know, that also means you're, you're sourcing from other parts of the world. But I bet you you're also looking at the quality of those products, what chemicals are in them, and making sure that it's not toxic and all that. You know, mm -hmm. you, you might want to double down on that a little bit and, and you know, leverage the fact that in the United States, because you're selling to Americans, there's a whole patriotic side of things, which I don't want to get caught up in because it gets political really quick, right? But there's this other side of being made in America or produced in America or designed in America. I think even Apple says designed in, in America, even though they're all made in China, because you know, you're following American laws for safety and health and all that good stuff. So just double down on it. It's American, if, you know, American made, American designed, whatever. Because there's a quality level from that, and there's also the, you know, the, you know, if you're selling to Americans, it's easy if you're already an American. So just, just embrace that kind of stuff, and you know, be overt with it. You know, have a little you know, tried and tested in, in the Great Pacific Northwest or something, right? You know, all, yeah. all that kind of good, good, fun stuff. Um, cool. So it. But I, I love the story and all the different things you're doing. It just, you know, 
once you have so much message to get out there, it's hard to, you know, do it all. You just, you just keep doing it and you just keep refining it as you build it out. And you might want to think about having more than one about page, right? So you've got the R story. So Campfire Stories is your blog, FAQ. In some of the stores I build, we end up with up to three different about pages, right? The first about page is your story, right? Your background, how this all got started. You know, what's the vision? What's the mission? You know, all that good stuff. Your second about page could be the team. So you show all of your team members, right? You show a nice photo of them. Maybe what I always tell people is when I see the team page, I want to see babies and dogs because you're trying to make that human connection, right? And I, I noticed you already do that. Like in a couple of your photos, you show the, the dog in the background and that kind of stuff. And that's just being more human or, you know, you show mm -hmm. that, you know, hey, I'm a family guy and here's my kids and people, people care about that, right? It, it makes you more human and more approachable kind of thing. And then the third one might be about your products. And that could be how they're designed, how they're manufactured, how we make sure they're not toxic and all that kind of stuff. So you can separate those out into def different about stories and messaging. And then the beautiful thing about that is once you separate that content out, you get to reuse that. And, and are you using email today? Are you using Klaviyo or something like that? Yes. So in Klaviyo, your welcome series is a super important series if you don't have one already, but I bet you do. But then you take those three about, you know, pages, and those are three, you know, emails that go into your Klaviyo welcome series. And your welcome series can be, you know, literally, actually, I just, the podcast episode that went out today, I say your welcome series can be 52 emails long that you send out one a week for a year kind of thing. And the hard part is we don't have enough content for that. So you just want to keep, you know, telling your message, building your story, having unique content in each email, but you could have a welcome series easily for you, for your business today with the content you already have, that's 10 or 20 emails that are going out. You know, you could take all your blog articles, turn them into an email each also, and just have that welcome series go out for a long period of time, just reinforcing your, your, your brand and making that human connection, right? Showing the people, showing the faces, showing the dog, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I actually saw you take a note there. So something resonated with you. So <laughs> good to see. Yeah, I think uh, it's an interesting dynamic. And I'm sure you see this all the time with startups is you launch with one product uh, and usually one person. <laughs> I yep. mean, that's me. That's me and my daughter in the photo. Uh, yep. So uh, that's how you launch. And then um, and my daughter's out here building pillows today. So like. Uh, and you add more products, you add more to your story, you, uh, you know, as you become more complex or sophisticated, uh, it's also how do you continue to be the authentic small startup that we are? I mean, we, uh, yeah. And I think there's an interesting dynamic and tension, you know, I think in social, it's way more accepted and expected to be pretty intimate and authentic with who we are. And that's why we do a lot of stories of us building our product and out doing what we love to do. Um, yep. And finding that balance with a website where I think it just tends to ex be expected to be a little bit more professional uh, and more about building confidence in the in quality of our product. Um, like how do you also keep it intimate and Yep. Uh, authentic to who we are without being too scrappy because um, I mean we're still a scrappy startup like I joke around like if you went to that chat right now that would come to me right and we yep. get customers that say well how do I know that the mattress is going to ship today and it's because I'm going to talk to Elijah who's going to ship it and you're chatting to me and asking me that question and yes it's going to ship I see it um, so like Keep, that's where we are as a small business right now. Does that scare people because we're small and that scrappy? Uh, probably not, but that's like the tension that we try and uh, like, I think as a startup, you want to be a grown up and create that confidence. Uh, but well, how much so you communicate that on the website and how, uh, how approachable you are on the website, I think is just an interesting tension and something we'll continue to, test yeah and there, there's no perfect answer there uh, that said 
you use the word scrappy, which I totally get. You don't want to be scrappy on the website. You want to look professional, right? But I heard you equate the word professional, and maybe this is just my interpretation of it, with not being personal, right? And that's the one I'd argue against. If that's your daughter and she works at your company, you are now a family owned and run business. And I would double down on people love that. That's the that's one of the stories, right? You have many stories, right? And one of the stories is, you know, these guys are outdoor fanatics. You know, you might have other people on your team that you've been camping with or biking with for decades, and now you're in business together. People love those kind of stories, right? And it's not, like I said, it's not the only story, but the fact that your daughter is an employee, you know, I, I would emphasize that, not de-emphasize that, because now you're even more human and you're more relatable. And when people, you know, are out camping on your mattress, they're not going to talk about the ISO 901 approval rating of the mattress, right? They're going to talk about this guy, Aaron, who, who invented this thing. And he's up there in Seattle doing all this great outdoor stuff that I see on social. He's even got his family working on the business now. That's a story they're going to retell, you know, not so much about the memory phone, even, even though that's not unimportant. All I'm saying is that's not a story that people retell as well. Sure. So I, I would, you know, I would totally embrace your size. Like a lot of, a lot of business, and I was guilty of this before. I, I'm a one person shop by agency. Um, everything that I do, I do myself for my clients. And I used to, you know, consciously or subconsciously, you know, use the word we a lot. And, and I've, I've learned over time, it's like, no, it's, it's I, right? I am here. I will do it. It will be done. Um, and I, I now embrace my smallness where I used to try to obfuscate my smallness. Mm -hmm. but it, it, I actually think it's a strength to most, most of your customers, especially in your space where, you know, their connection to you personally, being an outdoor person gives you street cred, right? As opposed to a Procter and Gamble product scientist or something behind something. Yep. That was a great point. So we're, we're running out of time here pretty quickly. Is there any questions that you have that I, that I can, you know, answer for you or try to answer for you um, before we wrap it up? No, I think great to meet you. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to share more about Hest and uh, certainly hear your thoughts and feedback. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, I, again, with my product design, it's all about iterating and uh, yeah. learning and uh, this feels like a very helpful and uh, beneficial, hopefully mutually beneficial opportunity to, to do that. So uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. And like for a store that's been around for two and a half, three years, I am super impressed with how far you guys have learned a ton in a short period of time. Uh, you guys, you know, are really well buttoned up. You're doing a great job and I expect you're going to do even better in the future. You're heading in the right direction. I'm, I'm super impressed by y'all. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was great talking to you. All right. Great. Take care. All right. Bye.